increasingly tense relationship with China and the government's push to have an independent inquiry on Tuesday into the origins of the outbreak. It's very clear now that Chinese President Xi Jinping is exploiting the coronavirus outbreak to assert China's dominance while the rest of the world is on its knees and struggles to deal with the dual economic and health crisis. Let's have a look at China's actions since they first lied and started to cover up news of a new coronavirus in December. They have research institutions working on a vaccine. They're hacking the research institutions that are working on a vaccine. And there's an escalation of cyber attacks in the US, Australia and the UK. China also quietly scooped up medical supplies and protective equipment like masks from around the world while denying the coronavirus was infectious. China is engaging in increasingly aggressive incidents in the South China Sea, which has included sinking a Vietnamese fishing boat. They're intentionally hurting Australia's economy via tariffs and trading suspensions at a time when we're already suffering economically in large part because of China's of the, of the virus. And worse, Chinese ministers won't even speak to Australian politicians to engage in starting to sort out some of these issues. And China now significantly has admitted to destroying virus samples. This is something I reported on a couple of weeks ago because it was included in a, a dossier prepared by two concerned Western governments that I reported on. And now China has admitted to doing just that. There are those that say Australia should back down, that we should shut our mouths and be subservient to China for the sake of the economic partnership. Think about the comments that Twiggy Forrest, Kerry Stokes, Bob Carr have made, and the list goes on. I think it is time that Scott Morrison resist the, the temptation to um, uh, go for local domestic votes to build his own domestic political capital at the expense of these important international relationships. And that's Labor MP Joel Fitzgibbon, and he was speaking uh, to Chris Kenny just after uh, China had banned beef exports from, from four uh, companies. But thankfully, the Morrison government is taking a firmer approach. Trade Minister Simon Birmingham said Australia may take China to the World Trade Organization and lodge a dispute if China goes ahead and imposes 80% tariffs on Australian barley. This is about using the system that we strongly support of rules-based international trade uh, to ensure that where we think things are operating outside of those rules, we call them out and we seek a resolution through the independent umpire. And that was Simon Birmingham, of, of course, on the ABC today. He also said that the Chinese market was becoming too risky for Australia and he urged businesses, uh, to, uh, businesses and farmers to look to other countries and diversify. I would expect that many Australian businesses uh, off the back of some unpredictable regulatory interventions such as those, see those we've seen in the last couple of weeks uh, would start to uh, consider whether the risk profile has changed uh, and may therefore look at other markets. While Australia is holding firm, firm and is not acquiescing to China's demand that there be an inquiry into the origins of the outbreak, something that is actually routine after a pandemic, the US is taking an even more forthright approach in calling out China's conduct. Donald Trump's top diplomat in Australia, Ambassador, Ambassador Arthur Culverhouse, has described the communist regime as bullies. Here's what he had to say in a piece he wrote for a government and industry website called Defence Connect, which we ran on our front page this weekend. He said, what Foreign Minister Maurice Payne has rightly referred to as destabilising activities are hardly new tactics from the CCP playbook. But they are being pursued with shocking new vigour as the rest of the world is focused on com combating COVID-19 pandemic, one which the CCP, through gross negligence, obsessive secrecy, and brazen dishonesty first covered up while exporting it to the world. He went on to say, sadly, in this playbook, creating a global pandemic is treated as one more opportunity to advance geostrategic objectives. It's not just the United States who has this view. Former Australian uh, De Department of Defence Deputy Secretary Peter Jennings made the same point when he came on my show recently. As soon as Beijing became aware of this problem in Wuhan, which was around the end of last year, it was making calculated steps to work out how it could emerge from this crisis 
more successful than anyone else. At exactly the same time as Chinese-based companies in Australia, or Chinese companies based in Australia, were, were strip mining protective equipment out of Australia to send to Wuhan. So there has been, I think, lies and duplicity aplenty from the Communist Party.